well. Let me let me back it on up a little bit. Huh? Here come Diddy. Here come Diddy. You know, he 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 hear me talking to y'all on the YouTube. And here he come. Here he come. I hope y'all are well. Y'all, if you don't know, if this is your first time watching my content, Diddy is my dog. His nick his name is Salam. But we call him Diddy because he always got to be all up in the video. Okay, so we call him Diddy. But yes, every time he see me get on live or something, he try to chime in and jump in. But hey, y'all, I see y'all in the chat. How y'all doing? Hey, Moni Cooper. Hey, Danielle. Shay, I hope y'all are well. Hey, E. Kane, how you doing? Hi, Danielle Williams. Yes, I am live. This is a live. Yes, E. Kane. This is a live peace. Yes. Peace, Universal Lighthouse. Hey, Sean. I hope you are well. Hi, everybody. Yes, this is a live, live, live. This is a live, live. <laughs> yes, you caught a live. I'm so happy to see y'all. And y'all gonna enjoy this one. Okay, because this is a topic that I've been talking about, uh, going live about or talking about for a while, and I haven't done it. Okay, and, I, and I'm here, and y'all know I've been going live on various platforms, but I said this one, I owe it to my people. I got to bring this one to the YouTube, because I've been telling y'all on YouTube that I was going to talk about spiritual gifts. I've been telling y'all for a while, we're going to talk about the Claire's. You know, when I tell y'all things to study when it comes to spirituality, I always say study the Claire's, study the Claire's. So this video, the intention for this video is to talk about the Claire's, but not only do I want to explain what the Claire's are and how they occur or how you may know you are experiencing them, before we even get there, I want to explain signs that you know spirit is present, spirit is, is here and ready to communicate with you. So once you know spirit is present and you know spirit is willing and ready to communicate, then you know what to look for. And that's when we'll tap into the Claire's. Oh, Ashe, thank you, Ekane. And look at the spiritual alignment. Ekane just donated $22.22 2222. And today is 11 2 2 0 2 2 1 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 ones. 1 1 0 2 2 0 2 2. Look at the divine alignment. Thank you for that, Ekane. So I want y'all, y'all in the chat. Okay, what it do, Swerve? What it do, hey? What it do, Swerve? What it do? Okay, in the chat, y'all, I want y'all to be active in this chat now because when we talk about signs that spirit is present, right? When we talk about that, I want y'all to talk about things that you experience because, you know, th th first off, let's go ahead and, and, and make it clear, huh? Shout out to my moderator uh, who's in the house, Universal Lighthouse. Uh, this live, uh, I already set the intention. I told y'all what we're talking about. By now, you should already know if this ain't your thing, if communicating with spirit ain't your thing, it's your time to head out. Okay, it's your time to head out. If communicating with spirit, if ancestor veneration and, and understanding the spirit and the energies of the universe is not your thing, it's your time to head out. Go be well. Today, Wednesday, somebody got Bible study, huh? Go ahead on the Bible study now. Okay, get, a, get, get up out the spirit business. Get up out the witchy folk business. Okay, all right. So if you are still here, I'm assuming that you prepared to share. I'm assuming that you are open to ancestor veneration. I'm assuming that you are open to spirit. Uh, that I, I'm, I'm assuming that you are prepared and open and willing to communicate. Okay. So let's start out by talking about how do you know spirit is present? When we venerate our ancestors, we practice ancestor veneration. Um, when we understand the energy of living things, when we understand God, we understand that we all vibrate in energy. We all vibrate in energy. We are all made up of energy. And that energy takes various shapes and forms. So when we say spirit, we are speaking about the energy of all. The energy of all things that show up in different forms. And because we show up in different forms, we speak different languages. Language is just simply how you communicate. Oftentimes we hear language and we think about uh, Spanish, English, French. But language is just the form in which you communicate. 
I believe that everything that has energy has the ability to communicate. The trees communicate. The water communicates. Ancestors communicate. Okay, we communicate. And it is all trying to communicate with us, all trying to communicate a message, something that we need to know so that we can all vibrate on the universal alignment. Again, when we speak about the universe, we're speaking about the all. When we speak about spirit, we're speaking about the all showing up in various forms. So when we say spirit is communicating, how do we understand the communication of energy? How do we understand the communication communication of the all, the energy, the universal energy, okay? So I want to be clear and define spirit as that. Now, when you are communicating with ancestors, you're practicing ancestor veneration, it is normal for spirit to show up, for ancestors to show up, okay? When you are at the water and you are giving offering to the water, whether you practice hoodoo and you're giving offering to the water as an element and honoring it, whether you are uh, an honorer of Orisha and a part of a uh, Orisha-aligned tradition and you are going to the, the water, to the ocean for Yemeya or to the river for Oshun um, or you are standing in the rain for Oya and uh, you're standing in the rain for Shango, whether you are at, in the mountain somewhere and you are honoring earth and land and giving thanks to Obatala, whatever it is, whatever you are around, you are giving thanks and giving offering. And that is a form of being open, showing your willingness to communicate. So how do you know that the energy is prepared to communicate? How do you know spirit is present and prepared to communicate? Some things you may notice, I see y'all in the chat already naming some things. Um, some people are saying butterflies, animals, animals. Pay attention to animals making sounds uh, in the group chat. A sister said that she, you know, she was doing her salt burn and the owl started hooting. You know, the owl hoot making noise. So you hear, you hear animals, you see animals flying by, come and land on you. Sometimes a butterfly or a bee will come and land on you. A ladybug will come and land on you. Birds will fly close to you or start flocking to you. Spirit often, because we have to remember animals hold energy. Spirit will often send animals as a means of communication. And no, I cannot get into the details right now of what each and every animal means. I, this That'll be a long video, okay? But just start looking or being aware of animals. If you start noticing a lot of animals making sounds or start attracting to you, start flocking to you, that's a sign that spirit is present and ready to communicate, okay? And all kind of animals too, including bugs. Because although we may have an internalized fear of bugs, they too are life and they too carry energy and they too assist in communication, okay? Another way... You may notice that spirit or another sign that spirit is present and ready to communicate is hearing ringing in the ears. Ringing is a sound. You know, we think about the sound of the vibration, the sound of the bowl. If, if you was on my live last night, you know, we did a collective offering uh, for the energy that is take off and his transition. And we did a collective offering and we rang the bell. I advise that you ring a bell. You beat your singing bowl, you know, vibrate your singing bowl. You hit your drums. Anytime you start hearing that ringing or an elevated vibration, that is a sign that spirit is present. Okay. Yes. The, the ear, the ring. Bringing ears happen often. And, and again, I want to also say, please beware that this is assuming that you are healthy. Okay. <laughs> this is assuming that you are healthy. This is assuming that you have no health complications. Huh? Okay. Because I don't want your blood pressure to be up. And that's why you're here and ringing because you're, you're, you're about to pass out. Okay. I don't want to hear that you ain't ate all day. Or you, you ain't drink all day, you dehydrated and you're thirsty and that's why you're hearing ocean water and you're about, to, you're about to tap out on us. Okay, so this is all assuming that you are taking care of your health and wellness. Okay, <laughs> so ringing is a kind of, is a normal one. Ringing is a normal one. Okay, sometimes you'll hear that ringing in the ear. Sometimes you'll, it'll sound like ocean in your ear. Okay, so that's very normal. Another thing that's quite normal, let me uh, check in. Okay, I see y'all in the chat. Y'all so silly. Y'all so silly. 
<laughs> another thing that is quite normal, um, especially when spirit is present, something they love to do is send that cool breeze. They will send that cool breeze to you. Okay. They will send that cool breeze. You get a chill. You feel a sudden wind out of nowhere. It might, you might be in a house. It may not even be any windows open. It may not be anything like that, but you just all of a sudden feel a breeze. You feel a brush. Okay. That is another sign. Another sign that spirit is present. Y'all, there are so many. There are so many signs that spirit is present. So I'm about to just start running through them uh, because, because there's so many and I don't want to overwhelm y'all. But please, if you are watching this late, please look at the chat. Turn the chat on so you can see your family members sharing their signs, you know, sharing things that they've experienced because I'm just about to start running through some. If you hear knocking on the doors or knocking on the wall, do not fear that. A lot of people have this fear that knocking means negative, something negative. It doesn't necessarily mean that. It just means that spirit is trying to get your attention. So if you hear knocking, that is a sign. If you are sitting on the bed or laying in the bed, and you feel feel like someone has sat down. You know when you're sitting in the bed and it feel like someone sat down next to you? Or you're sitting on a bed and it feel like uh, someone laid next to you. You feel that bed go down? That is a sign that they are present. The bed shaking and vibrating is a sign that they are present. Seeing silhouettes and apparitions is a sign that they are present. If you see, if it looks like somebody walked past the door. Or it looks like somebody uh, is, 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 is going past you real fast. Especially like doorways, halls always things like that you know if you see a shadow or apparition that is a sign flickering lights is a sign things turning on and off are signs pictures falling things randomly falling off the wall are a sign without any interruption without anything moving all of these are signs um feeling like a touch on your face especially sometimes you'll feel like a kiss on the cheek or a touch on the face a touch a graze on your arm that is a sign anytime you feel like a physical touch that's a sign that spirit is ready and present and willing to communicate they just need you to open up and prepare to receive okay and again, the chat is going with a multitude of different signs that everyone has experienced. So we talked about animals. We talked about things you may hear. We talked about things you may see around you with the pictures falling off the walls, um, uh, uh, the, the, the flickering lights. We talked about, uh, you know, have, the, feeling the bed going down, things you may feel, feeling the bed going down, feeling like somebody sat next to you or stood next to you, feeling that cool breeze, feeling the touch or a hand on you, feeling like somebody touched your arm, touched your skin, kissed you on the cheek things like that another thing is smells well, sometimes you'll smell the perfume or the cologne of someone that you love that transition who's now an ancestor now you'll smell their perfume randomly sometimes you may smell something that they enjoyed like if they was the smoker you may smell cigarettes or smell tobacco or smell whatever they'd like to smoke hmm. you smell whatever they like to smoke Okay, sometimes if they was a cook, you may smell the food that they like to cook. If they was a baker, you may smell cake bacon and ain't no cake bacon, but you just got this sudden scent. So scent is another way that they use to, to show that I'm here and I'm present. Also taste. You may randomly get the taste of something across your tongue as though you are eating it or have recently eaten it. It may feel like you, like you again, if so, especially this happens a lot when you have a cook who passed, the ancestor who, who was a cook or an ancestor who enjoyed food. You may taste whatever it is that they enjoyed, or sometimes you taste the taste of tobacco. Tobacco is one, and, and let me explain the, the, the spirit communication with tobacco, right? So tobacco um, is an offering that is accepted by Elegba, okay? Orisha Elegba, the guardian of the gateways, the guardian of the crossroads. So uh, uh, tobacco and rum uh, are offerings that are accepted by, by Papa Legba, Elegba, Elegua, depending on what path of Orisha um, you are, you know, uh, initiated to. So both are the energy that guard the gateways, okay, guardian of the gateways, and they accept tobacco and rum. So oftentimes spirit will bring the taste of tobacco across your tongue or the scent of tobacco to your nose. And that's a sign that the gateways have opened and spirit is present and ready to communicate. Okay. So 
I hope that helped. Those are just some signs that spirit is present. And again, if you are late to this, read the chat and they, everyone is offering signs and things that they've experienced themselves. Okay. So I say Dominique sending much love and much peace to you and your healing journey, as well as your sister's energy. Dominique said her sister transition, sending love to y'all. Um, okay. So now we know spirit is present. Okay, you've experienced these things, you notice the lights flickering, or you felt that cold breeze, you notice something is going on, spirit is present. How will spirit communicate? How will spirit communicate? You ready to communicate? You're open to it. Sorry, y'all got a little, I got a little residual. I ain't, I, I just finished having some, uh, having some catfish. Huh? I just had a little catfish. Okay, I got a little resent, little residuals. Okay, excuse me. Huh? So, uh, how do you know spirit is present and ready to communicate? This is when we get into the four clairs. Now, we are all blessed with a spiritual gift. Okay, we are all blessed with the ability to be able to communicate with spirit the ability to be able to hear spirit. I love you too. Um, the ability to be able to, you know, have conversation and speak the language of spirit. And oftentimes people say, well, okay, queen, I sat there, I meditated, I did my offerings, but I don't know what to do. I don't know. How do I know that spirit is talking to me? How do I know? Um, and this is the thing. And I'm glad you asked that question. Let me catch your name. Whitney, Whitney Gibson said, how do you keep from being afraid? And this is what we about to talk about because you have to release the fear. Okay. You have to release the fear and how you release the fear is by embracing the fear. Fear is just knowing that you are uncertain of what's to come. That's what fear is. Fear is is because you are uncertain of what's to come. So you are afraid. You don't know which, if you should do it or not. You don't know if you should be open or not because you aren't sure of what's to come. The first thing you have to do when you go to your altar or you go to the water or you go to the grave, to the cemetery to visit someone and you bring offering, because that's what we do. We bring offering. And let's think about that, right? You know, we talk about ancestor veneration and how we bring offering for our ancestors. And, you know, some people who are religious shun that and they think that that's, you know, weird or demonic. But it's a norm that when you go to the cemetery, you bring flowers and you bring something that they loved to the, to, to the cemetery, isn't that wild you know isn't that wild huh <laughs> isn't, isn't that wild we do that so when you go to the cemetery you bring offering when you go to the water you bring offering if you are at your ancestor veneration altar you bring offering and you sit down and you may feel a little nervous okay you felt that breeze you felt that chill you heard that knocking you heard you hear that ringing you know somehow spirit is present and this fear hits you but unpack that fear and the key to unpacking that fear is knowing that i don't know what's about to happen i don't know what i'm about to experience i don't know what they're going to say but whatever is next i am well I always tell y'all, you have to trust your wellness. You have to know that it is all happening in alignment with your wellness. It is all happening because you are elevating in vibration. So anything that occurs is in alignment with your wellness. And that is how you work on, Whitney, that's how you work on not being afraid. Just remind yourself that it is for your wellness. Once you know that, be open to experiencing the clairs. To really fully experience the clairs, this is when silence comes into play. You need silence, okay? Try, please, silence. If silence is too much for you because sometimes your own mind, sometimes your own thoughts are, uh, you know, are, are going too fast, are clogging you, you know, you, 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 it's overwhelming. If silence is too much, Play some music that's in alignment with the energy, okay? So you try to play something calm, try to play something soothing, whatever brings soothing and calm to you. You might, you know, a little trap might might calm you down, okay? A, li a little Migos, okay, might calm you down. Turn that Migos on low, 
Okay, put that Gucci man on low. Okay, if you need a little Gucci to calm you down, put that Gucci on a little boosy. You need a little boosy to put you, put it on low. Okay, for some folks, it's Luther. For some folks, it's Al Green. For some folks, they need a little temptations. They want to hear the music that their mom or their daddy used to love. And that's what brings them calm in that time. So just this is when you have to be aware of yourself, okay? You have to be connected to your own ori and connected to your own inner divine and ask yourself, what brings you calm? Thank you, Melanie. I appreciate that. What brings you calm? What soothes you? So it, it, to help push past that fear, trust that it's for your wellness and either sit in silence or play something that soothes and calms your own energy. Because to be open to communicating with spirit, to be open to communicating with energy, you have to be in calm, aligned energy. So do whatever calms you, okay? If you need, if you need a little herbal assistance, have your little herbal assistance, but your energy just needs to be calm. Now, once our energy is calm, let's get into our clairs. These are some things you should be aware of. This is how spirit communicates, okay? Let's start with the first one and the most commonly known, clairvoyance. Clairvoyance. Clairvoyance is the most popular clair. Because that is the one that everyone sees on TV. Thank you, Shay. I appreciate it. That's the one everyone sees on TV. You know, uh, I, I never I never watched the show, but you, I told y'all, you know, I've, I've had gifts since I was young. And people would always be like, you remind me of That's So Raven. You remind me of Raven Simone and That's So Raven. Because uh, when Raven, you know, when Raven would get the vision, she would uh, like freeze and look off. Y'all, I, ne I never, I'm, I, this is my guilty admission. Not so guilty, but it was just just my life. I didn't watch that so Raven, but I saw the clips, you know, the trailers that when she would like stare off. So I'm assuming that's like was her thing. But people would always tell me that, that I, when, you know, when I get vision, I remind them a little bit of that. So Raven, I don't necessarily like stare off, but that's what happens. All right. The blank stare out. Thank you. Thank you. Universal Lighthouse. Thank you, Sean. Sean, I'm trying to get used to not calling you by your first and last name. Cause I realized that I be putting all your business out on the street. Huh? So I'm trying to get used to just saying Universal Lighthouse and I say your first and last name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yes. So clairvoyance, clairvoyance um, is seeing images, seeing images. Okay. And in, in seeing images with clairvoyance, right? Sometimes spirit likes to communicate through images, which is clairvoyance. And when we have clairvoyance, it's not always like, how I'm looking at my phone right now and I'm talking to y'all and reading the comments. It's not always images as plain as that. You're not going to necessarily see uh, something or someone appear in full directly in your face. Um, you get like a, it's, it's, it's a vision. It's most often a vision. It's most often a, like you, you could close your eyes or your eyes, can, it's, your eyes can be fully open and you see it, you know? So, it's almost as though you are not present in your current physical space. You just see it. You just see it. And I think that's where like the blank stare thing comes from, because it's almost as if your sight is removed from the present physical realm. Your sight is removed from what's around you and you see it. OK, so clairvoyance is seeing images. You see it. You vision it. You see it. And sometimes, you know, what they show you will just depend on what they're trying to communicate. So if they're trying to communicate uh, something dealing with uh, th their transition and maybe they had to go to the hospital, you will literally see an ambulance and you will see flashing lights. You may see sirens. That's all clairvoyance. OK, that's all clairvoyance. Um, it's, it, it, clairvoyance is not the same as dreaming because clairvoyance is occurring when you are fully awake and conscious. Dreaming is occurring in rim and below level resting eye movement and below level if you are new to this please go watch my video on sleep paralysis I, I have another video on lucid dreaming and astral projection where we talk about sleep studies and understanding the science of sleep so you have conscious you have rim which is resting eye movement and then you have the deeper levels or deeper stages of sleep dreaming occurs at rim and below Claire the clairs all occur 
in consciousness when you are fully awake. So it's not like dreaming, but um, the vision, I guess the closest thing I could compare it to is almost like a daydream. But you're, when you're daydreaming, you're kind of like zoned out. When you are experiencing a clear, you're not zoned out. You are fully conscious of what's happening and what's going on. You see what I'm saying? You are fully aware of what's going on, but you will just see it. So say if I'm looking at y'all, I'm talking to y'all right now and then clairvoyance occurred and, uh, you know, a spirit is trying to tell me something about school, okay, a school or a child, I will literally see the child before me, you know, that's the closest way I could describe it. You just see, you see images and your focus and consciousness is on that. So it's not daydreaming. It's not your own. You will know that it's not your own thoughts. It's not your own mind. This is clairvoyance. You are seeing the images and they, again, they're going to show you what they want you to know. Okay. So whatever it is they're trying to tell you, you will literally be able to see it before you. And the reason clairvoyance is so popular again, because this is the one that they show in the TV shows. When they show somebody having psychic abilities, they usually depict them having clairvoyance or being clairvoyant where, you know, again, they daze off and see these images um, or have these visions, right? Uh, like think about Eve's Bayou, right? Eve's Bayou was clairvoyant where remember, uh, ooh, what, what was the aunt's name? The aunt's name, y'all, y'all help me out, help me out in the chat. The aunt's name in Eve's Bayou, and she would get the clairvoyant visions. Remember, she would be able to, they would literally go to a scene and she would be able to see a full scene. All of that is clairvoyance. So she was a clairvoyant. And that's why that that Claire is so popular, because, again, that's the one that's depicted in shows and movies and things like that. OK, um, Moselle, Moselle was the aunt. Moselle was the aunt. Yes, she was. OK, thank y'all. Thank y'all. Brandy, Nicole, everybody. Thank y'all so much. Yes. Moselle is the aunt. Thank y'all. So, yes, yeah, she would get the uh, she would get the clairvoyant visions. She would get the clairvoyant visions. Uh, so that's an example. So if you want to know clairvoyancy, go watch Eve's Bayou and look at Aunt Moselle. And that's clairvoyant. Seeing the images. Now, let's move to the next Claire. The next Claire, y'all, I'm looking at the time. It's so funny because I always tell myself these lives is going to be 15 minutes, 10 minutes. And we already at 27. Huh? How did we get here? Uh huh? <laughs> but okay the next claire so we have clairvoyance let's talk about clairaudience clairaudience so clairvoyance is seeing images clairaudience is hearing think about audience audio clairaudience is hearing now spirit likes to communicate through clairaudience a lot you may hear a voice but i want to be clear some people, when they think about Claire audience, they're only thinking about hearing a voice as though I'm talking to you right now. OK, I'm, it, sometimes it is that sometimes spirit does speak that loud. But from my own experience, the only time they will get that loud is when I'm trying to hush them down. The only time it will sound like they're right here is when I'm trying to hush them down. Usually the voice is within. Usually the voice is within. But you will know because it, I, I thank you for asking that question, Life. That's exactly where I'm going. Life with Calm said, does it sound like your own voice? Usually it does not. Usually it does not. Usually clear audience and spirit is communicating. Usually does not sound like your own voice. Usually you'll be able to differentiate the tone and know, okay, this is an older man who is speaking. Um, you'll be able to, the, the cadence that they speak in, the tone that they speak in, it is usually a voice that is not your own. Sometimes it will be your own voice, but usually that's when it's a message for you. So I should differentiate that. Um, it, with clear audience, if spirit is sending you a message to communicate with someone else, usually most times it will be in a tone or a voice that you can describe to them. OK, because one thing about spirit, y'all, spirit is very clear. Spirit is very clear. OK, very clear. So they don't want no confusion. So they try to be as clear as possible. So they will differentiate their voice from your voice. OK, they'll differentiate their voice from your voice. 
But if you are uh, needing some communication or asking a question and they're telling you something that is for you, sometimes if you're asking like, what should I do about this? What should I do about that? Sometimes you may hear yourself tell yourself exactly what you do. And that's how you'll know it's spirit and not your own ego talking to you. When, you, when the answer just hits you just like that and it's clear as day, Sometimes it's your own voice, but it hits you just like that. That's when you'll know it's spirit. Okay. But again, usually, especially with the messages for somebody else, spirit has their own distinction between them and you, and you will know it. Okay. Yes. That's when you know. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Universal Lighthouse. That's when you'll know it's your higher self, your Ori speaking to you. Okay. That's when you hear it in your own voice, but it hits you. That clarity just hits you and your own voice tells you. That's how you'll know it's your own Ori. Okay. Your higher self, your own Ori. Okay. So that's some, that's some differentiating. Now, things that they may say, clear audience is a common way that, especially once spirit knows that you are open and you are willing to communicate, Clear audience is a common way that spirit will communicate because they will literally say, hey, hey, this is me. Hey, this is what I'm trying to tell you. This is what you need to do. This is what happened. This is where you need to go. Clear as day. Clear as day, you will hear it. Clear as day, you will know. Whatever answer you are seeking, clear as day. Clear. Okay, clear. That clear audience is no game. Clear as day, you will hear it and will know. Okay, now, speaking of knowing, let's move on to the next clear. The next clear is clear cognizant. So we talked about clairvoyance is seeing images. We talked about clear audience is hearing, hearing. Clear cognizance is the knowing. The knowing, you just know, you just know. Clear cognizance is the realization, it's the clarity, okay? And I feel like, especially when people are new to communicating with spirit, when you're new to it, I feel like clear cognizance, this is my personal opinion, clear cognizance is the most comfortable way spirit will communicate. It's like, okay, if you don't want to see, if you don't want to hear, let me just give you the knowing. You just know what it is. You just know what's going to happen. You just know what to do. You don't need to hear a voice tell you. You don't even need to hear your inner divine voice, your ori, your higher self. You just know. You just know. That's clear cognizance. You ever had that feeling where you just know, you just know this is the right decision. You just know that this is going to work out. You just know what's going to happen next, whether good or bad. You just know that that person is something about them. It's almost like clear cognizance is like ta intuition on a thousand. That's clear cognizance. It's like intuition on a thousand. You just know. So when you think about cognizance, clear cognizance, think about cognition, okay? The psyche, you just know. That's the only way I could describe clear cognizance. You just know. You have an urge. Your spirit is moved. Your mind is strong. You are set. You just know. And usually... Again, when people aren't comfortable with communicating with spirit by seeing images or communicating with spirit by hearing, they, they aren't really that comfortable with that. But they want some type of clarity. You know, uh, I, you know, when, uh, my folks would be like, I need clarity. You know, I need clarity. And we say, you know, get your clear courts and, you know, get this and get that and take your spiritual bath and, you know, ask for clarity. And they come up out that spiritual bath water or they go to sleep and they wake up with a knowing Spirit has come. Spirit said, we were moving all confusion. We were moving all questions. This is your answer. You just know what to do. There is no doubt. There is no fear. You just know. That is clear cognizance. That's clear cognizance. The doubt is removed. The fear is removed. You just know. When you, only time doubt or fear may enter in is when your own ego steps in. So keep in mind, if you haven't watched the ego video, go watch my video on ego so you can know how to separate that ego from spirit. 
when you are asking spirit and saying, I need clarity and that knowing hits you, there is no fear. There is no doubt that clear cognizance has come and you know what to do. You know what's going to happen. You know how to move. You just know. But then ego may come in and try to cast doubt. Ego may come in and try to cast fear. Once you start speaking that clear cognizance and speaking your knowing, other people may try to come and cast their own doubt and their own fear. But when you check back in with spirit, again, you just know. That's clear cognizance. Every time you check back in with spirit, you just know. It's kind of like they said, I, 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 I done told you. That's clear cognizance. Okay? That's clear cognizance. So I hope that helps. That's, a, that's as clear as I could make it. Okay, I hope that helps. Now let's move on to the last clear. Let's move on. Let me sip a little water. Okay, y'all, the the, the 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 catfish got me parched, huh? It got me parched. But the last Claire, so we talked about clairvoyance images. Greetings, how you doing, Melanin Goddess Life? The first Claire, clairvoyance images. We talked about Claire audience hearing. We talked about clear cognizance, knowing. Our right, last Claire, and y'all, this is the heaviest one, huh? This is the heaviest one. Be careful what you ask for. I don't even. I don't. If if you if you know me, you know I don't even had to tell spirit calm this down, please. Calm down with this. That clear sentience. Clairsentience is no game. Clairsentience is feeling. Okay? Clairsentience is feeling. Oh, you are Zulu from South Africa. Peace, peace. I hope you are well. You know I love me some South Africa. You know I love me some South Africa. You can't say Zulu. You know you you know you're going to snatch my attention. Peace, how you doing? Sending love to South Africa. But okay, okay. Clear sentience is the feeling. Now, what will you feel? Sometimes spirit will communicate whatever they have to say by making you feel it. So this is a moment where I have to differentiate the message for you versus someone else. Okay. But sometimes even if the message is for you, it may happen this way as well. Say, for example, spirit is trying to tell you that someone is having issues with headaches. They will make you feel the headaches. Okay. It'll make you feel it. All of it, suddenly it'll happen. That's how you know it's clairsentience because it'll be sudden. It's nothing you did. It's nothing. It's just sudden. You get in the present with somebody and your head starts booming. And as soon as you communicate the, the message, like, um, do you struggle with headaches or migraines? And they say yes, the feeling goes away. As soon as the message is communicated, the feeling goes away. That's how you know. That's how you know. As soon as you communicate the message, the feeling goes away. Absolutely. Impasse experience this a lot. Okay. Yes. Physical impasse experience this a lot. The feeling goes, as soon as you communicate the message, the feeling goes away. I was, one time I was sitting, um, and my friend, you know, we, we had, this is, y'all, I don't like, uh, meeting new people, being around new folk like that. Uh, you know, I'll be having to tell spirit, calm down like that, you know, because one time I, me and my friend, we went to happy hour for some drinks and he invited a friend and his friend was just, you know, chilling and talking. We having a good time and all I'm looking at his friend and I knew spirit was about to come through. And I'm looking at his friend and all of a sudden I felt blood rush and I could smell blood. And I heard a woman's voice speaking and I said, do you have a sister? I heard a young woman's voice and I said, do you have a sister? He said, yeah. I said, she's fairly young. He said, yeah. I knew it was, it was a young woman's voice, so I knew it wasn't his mother. Um, so that's why I asked if he had a sister. He said, yes. And I said, does she struggle with like, uh, does she, does she have like an aneurysm or a brain bleed? And he said, she just recovered from a brain bleed. As soon as I said it, I didn't smell the blood. The feeling went away. Spirit just needs to communicate. They're, they're sending you feelings because they need you to get this message out there, making you feel what they want you to say. 
They're making you feel what they want you to communicate. So Spirit wanted me to know that he has a sister. His sister struggles with brain bleeds and she needs to go back to the doctor because she, if she goes to the doctor now, she can catch the next one before it ruptures. So Spirit wanted me to communicate. That was the whole message I ended up needing to communicate. But for, for me to do that, they gave me the feeling. The reason that sometimes I have to tell spirit to calm down, I already told y'all a while ago about the heart story. I was uh, about to have a consultation with a sister. And even before our consultation, like, you know, I thought literally I was like, okay, I got a consultation come up, coming up. Let me try to get some food in before the consultation. All of a sudden, my heart start beating real fast, like boom, 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 boom. And I'm feeling the chest pain. And I was so nervous. I was like, what's happening? Like, you know, but it, I knew it was spirit, but I, it, it just happened so suddenly. Boom, 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 boom. My heart is beating real fast. Y'all, I had to call the sister early. Okay. Cause I couldn't sit like this. I had to call her immediately. She, you know, she was excited. I was like, oh, oh th thank you so much. Yes, it's me. Okay, thank you so much. Do you have heart problems? I needed to know, okay, because that clairsentience is real. That physical feeling is real. I said, do you have heart problems? She said, yes. I said, and, and I finished communicating the message and everything because, you know, that's when the other clairs come in, all right? So finished communicating the message. After I communicated the message, I relaxed and calm, heart beating regular. Okay, heartbeat and regular. So I'm going to answer that question, Tina. So the thing about it is with Claire sentience, you will get the full physical feeling. And sometimes the feeling is something you need to communicate with them. Sometimes the spirit is trying to let you know how they transition. So, for example, if you are speaking to a spirit um, who was injured, you may feel pain in the area that they was injured in. You may feel a burning sensation in the area that they was injured in. That is a way that you'll know. Okay, that's clear sentience. That's how you'll know that, okay, they, some, they had a pain, they had a, 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 a burning or something. They, get, they, they may have, I don't even want to say it because of what just happened. But if they got shot, you may feel a burning in the area that they got shot in. If they got into a car accident, you may feel like you were just jolted. So that's a physical feeling you'll get, almost like a jolt, like a, like a snap back. And then it may be a follow-up pain or burn. But again, as soon as you communicate this, you don't feel it anymore. Okay? You may also feel, and this is where the, the physical impact that Universal Lighthouse is bringing in, you may also feel the emotion associated with it. So if someone is grieving a loss, you may, spirit may come through and let you know like, hey, I, you know, I'm ready to communicate. They are grieving a loss and you can feel the grief. You can feel the sudden sorrow and it'll just hit you. But again, after you communicate it, it's over. Shaking is another feeling. That's another thing you may experience. But again, it'll be, it's usually other feelings associated with it. So you'll know what the shaking is, means, you know? So another thing, like if the person is struggling with uh, leg issues or leg swelling, you may physically feel like your leg is getting bigger or feel like your feet are in water. That's a sign that they're trying to communicate leg swelling, okay? So again, that's why I said clairsentience is, is you know, it's, it's, it's physical feeling, but that's the one that I've definitely had to tell spirit, like calm down with that a little bit because, you know, it, a certain physical feelings can be shocking. It can throw you off. It can be too much. It can be overwhelming. Sometimes you'll break out in sweats. Yes, sometimes you may feel itchy because of clairsentience. And, you know, it can be overwhelming and so overwhelming that you yourself can't even communicate, especially if the person transitioned from like a suffocation or a choking or something like that. And you feel like your throat is closing up. You can feel the pressure on your neck, things like that. It's heavy. It's heavy, you know, it's heavy. I say, I say, is it 222? Is, I can't see the time on my screen. It's 222. I say, I say. So, you know, the thing about it is like we, we have to be mindful of clear sentience. And that's why I said when you, you know, asking for spirit to communicate, be careful of what you ask for. Okay, be careful, careful of what you ask for. Uh, Tina, I forgot what your question was. Can, if Tina, if you're still watching, can you ask your question one more time? Because I told you I was going to address it if I haven't already addressed it. Shay Breezy said, what about when you see things in your dreams? Um, I've had dreams where I felt compelled to immediately call the person. But sometimes, but sometimes it would be about a different person. 
how do I interpret these? The thing about it is, oh, uh, you said this is 257. Okay, somebody had commented 222. Maybe they were talking about the number of people in here. Okay, <laughs> that might have been what they was talking about. Uh, but okay, so dreaming is different from the Claire's. Okay, dreaming is different from the Claire's. So for dreaming stuff, go watch the video on lucid dreaming and astral projection. Okay, for I talked about dream stuff in, lucid, in the lucid dreaming video. That's different from the Claire's. Again, you will experience the Claire's when you are fully conscious, fully conscious. So all of these things, you know, as far as seeing, feeling, hearing, and all of that, when, when it's happening in the dream state, we don't necessarily consider it the Claire's because all of that happens in the dream state. You are not in a, you are not conscious in your dream state. So again, when we think about sleep studies, Let's think about, you know, the sleep study is conscious. Conscious means awake in a sleep study. Then you have REM, REM, resting eye movement, and then the other stages of sleep. Dreaming occurs at REM and below. The clairs occur at conscious. Okay, so think Claire's conscious, dreaming is rem and below. So that's different than the Claire's. Okay, so Tina said, what if you normally get migraines? So that's the thing. When it comes to clairsentience, usually... When spirit is trying to communicate, they will make you experience things that are not normal for you to experience. So if you are a person who already gets migraines or already gets headaches, they're not going to send you a headache to tell you that somebody else has a headache because they know that you are going to associate that with yourself. Okay, so they will communicate what they need to in a way that is not familiar to you, that you will not associate it with yourself if the message is for someone else. Okay, but if the message is for you, you may get a feeling that is familiar with you, but it's usually not something that's a part of your norm. Okay, good evening, good evening. It's usually not something that's a part of your norm. Okay, so that's how you'll know the difference. They, if you already struggle with, uh, I don't know why, uh, if you struggle with elbow pain, huh? You, and Spirit is trying to tell you that somebody else has elbow pain, they're not going to give you a pain in your elbow to tell you that somebody else has elbow pain. You know, usually they'll give you something, another sign. So that's, that may be when they move to one of the other Claire's, like Claire audience or Claire cognizance or, or clairvoyance. Okay. And I think that's important to note. So we talked about the four Claire's. We talked about clairvoyance as seeing images, Claire audience as being able to hear Claire cognizance as the knowing, Claire sentience as the feeling, being able to feel. Also with Claire sentience, I want to note that uh, it's also smelling too. Uh, smelling is included in that Claire sentience. Okay, so when you can smell, spirit will communicate through being able to smell certain things, feel certain things. Okay, so think. All right, let's talk about the five senses. When we think about uh, Claire Claire sentience, think about physical touch and smell. We think about clairvoyance, sight, being able to see, clairaudience, being able to hear. Okay? So let's think about that. All right? So clairsentience, physical touch, smell, and we can also include taste in that as well. Physical touch, smell, taste. Clairsentience. Clairaudience is here. Clairvoyance is sight. Okay, so that's how you can associate it with the five senses. And then clear cognizance, again, is just the knowing, the intuition, just the knowing. But like I said, it's intuition on a thousand. Okay, so smelling smoke like cigarette smoke suddenly. Okay, so so for example, if you are doing a read for someone else, okay, and, and spirit is coming through for someone else. OK, and they're trying to communicate something and they're trying to let them know, like, oh, this is your father. And, you know, I, I, I want them to know. You may say, uh, do you have an ancestor who was a smoker? They may make you smell smoke. Do you have an ancestor who was a smoker? Yes, my father loved to smoke, you know, so things like that will happen. That spirit used clairsentience, the smell of smoke, to communicate that they were a smoker. So that's how it works. Now. I think it's important to note that sometimes, a lot of times, especially when you are open to communicating, they will use all of the Claire's as a collective. OK, so sometimes, you know, if, if you've ever had a consultation with me, I, you know, I usually will run through in the very beginning, you know, the Claire's and how it all works so that when we go through the consultation and I say, I'm seeing this. OK, they're saying this. All right. I'm feeling this. I keep smelling this. That is all the Claire's working together. 
That's all the clans working together. So I'll give you an example. If I'm doing a consultation and uh, say, for example, a, a mother has passed and the mother, this actually happened. A mother passed and um, the mother used to love to make mac and cheese. And the mother showed me her making mac and cheese and the mother was standing behind her while she was making the mac and cheese and the mother felt I had the feeling of being very proud and then I could taste the mac and cheese so I said and all of this is happening before we ever talked anything about a mother and I said did your mother transition yes she did did she used to make mac and cheese a lot yes she has have you been trying to perfect her mac and cheese and been tasting different mac and cheeses trying to make hers the lady start crying yes she has okay perfect your mother wants you to know that when you are doing that she is present and she is watching you she's proud of you i got the feeling of pride so you see how all the clairs work together okay you see the clairsentience you see the clairvoyance where i could literally see her making the mac and cheese and the mother standing behind her that lets me know that the mother is present and she's watching her i could feel the feeling of pride i could see the mother smiling that's the clairvoyance the clairsentience the feeling of pride so you see how all the clairs work together in that case the clair audience didn't come through she she didn't say anything but she had me see it taste it feel it Okay, so that's how it all works together. So sometimes spirit will communicate in a variety of different clairs. Okay, but again, y'all have to remember that I've been doing this since I was young. Okay, I've been doing this since I was young. So you have to remember that. So, so you know, you may not have all of this happening at once. I saw someone say that they feel like spirit is not communicating with them. All of this is not going to happen to you at once for a lot of people, especially if you are very new to being open to communicating with spirit. So if you are new to it, you may not experience all this at once. You may just experience the clairsentience. You may just experience the feeling. You may just be at the space where you are in the very beginning where you aren't experiencing any of the clairs, but you know spirit is present. Now you just have to be open to communicating. So that's when you need to go back to the beginning of the video and talk and watch the part where I talked about how spirit, uh, how you can open yourself up to communicating with spirit. That's where you need to go back to that part. But if you are new to your spiritual journey, if you are new to ancestor veneration, if you are new to all of this, you have to take your time. Okay, you got to remember, everything is aligned with your wellness. Spirit does not want to scare you. They do not want to scare you. Okay, so if you are new to this and then all of a sudden they come through with hitting you with Claire after Claire after Claire, they talking to you, having you see things, having you feel things. They know that you're going to start thinking you crazy. Huh? They know that, you know, and they don't want you to be fearful. Okay, I saw another question. Someone asked, uh, the, do the clairs happen when reading tarot cards? They can. And that's why I talk about, uh, uh, so, so we finished with the clairs. Let's move on to q and I'm going to answer some of these questions in the chat. So do the clairs uh, come through when reading tarot cards? The clairs can happen during any form of divination. Any form of divination. But you know how I always say, you know, if you, if you know me, you know, I always tell y'all, I have nothing against tarot cards and other tools like that. You know, uh, people have different means of divination. I have nothing against tarot cards, playing cards. Some people use playing cards to divine and all that stuff. But those should be tools of confirmation. Everything we talked about in this video is how you communicate with spirit without any tools. You need nothing but yourself. By the time you pull those tarot cards out, you already have the message clear. You're just using the tarot cards or the playing cards as confirmation. So if you are a diviner and you're doing readings, when you do your readings, you should already communicate the message first. And then you say, now I'm going to pull the cards for confirmation. When you go get a reading, they should give you the message first and then say, now I'm going to pull the cards for confirmation. Now we're going to do these curry shells for confirmation. Now we're going to pull these playing cards for confirmation. The reading comes first. The message comes first. Everything else is confirmation. Okay, everything else is confirmation. So the clairs may happen when you are doing cards, but... 
try to start experiencing tapping into spirit before you even pull the cards, before you crack that deck. Tap into spirit and tap into your clairs and receive the message first and then see if the cards confirm your message. And that's how you'll know if your communication and gift is strong or you still need to do some work. Now, let's because I feel like this is going to answer a lot of the other questions. How do you enhance your spiritual gift? Tap into that Ori. Tap into your divine self. Open up that third eye chakra. Go back and watch my video on third eye chakra go to the search bar on YouTube and type in chakras, Kundalini awakening and talk, see some things about uh, opening up the chakras using the Kundalini method. Okay. Kundalini awakening of chakras. Go tap into that. Again, I have a YouTube video on opening up each chakra, things you can do, how you know if your chakra is blocked, go to that. So find different methods, find different practices that you can use to understand the chakras, open up that third eye chakra, Tap into your Ori. When you have blockages within yourself, you have blockages with spirit. Okay? Your Ori is your inner divine self. When you have blockages within yourself, you have blockages with spirit. Okay? How can spirit communicate with you when you are not well within yourself? You are not even open within yourself. So how can you be open to communicating with spirit? OK, so if you feel like you're not getting communication, you feel like you're not receiving communication, that's when you got to go within and see what's really going on. How's your sacral? How's your roots? How's your solar plexus? Are you struggling with some emotional blockages? How's your heart chakra? How's that third eye? How's that throat? Communication, that third eye is intuition. That heart is openness. That solar plexus is emotion. That sacral is the divine feminine and creativity. That root is the sacred masculine and grounding. How can you communicate with, with spirit when all of that or any of that is blocked? How can, uh, how can, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Universal Lighthouse, for that breakdown. Okay, for, to y'all screenshot Universal Lighthouse, that, that comment. That's a, that's a quick snapshot. Okay, um, but how can spirit communicate with you through clairsentience? If, how can they make you feel? Clairsentience is feeling. How can they make you feel if your solar plexus is blocked? Your own feeling center is blocked. Your own emotions is blocked. How can they make you feel? Huh? How can spirit make you see, help you see? How can they communicate through clairvoyance, through sight, when your own... A uh, third eye is blocked. How? Your third eye, keep in mind, the third eye is connected to the penal gland. Research the penal gland. How can they make you see if you are blocked? How can they clear, give you clear cognizance, the feeling of knowing when your knowing center is blocked? How can they give you clear cognizance? That's the feeling of being sure when your root, your grounding chakra is blocked. If your root chakra is blocked, you are always unsure. If your root chakra is blocked, you are always insecure. How can they give you clear cognizance when your root is blocked? You aren't even grounded. So we have to consider things like that. That's why, you know, I know it can sound repetitive when I'm always saying you got to go within, you got to go within, but I want to be clear in what I'm saying of why, why you got to go within. How can spirit communicate with you when your means of communication is blocked? Your throat chakra is blocked. That's the communication center. How can they speak to you? How can you have clear audience when your own voice is blocked? Your own center of communication is blocked. How? You see what I'm saying? So when I'm saying tap into your chakras, understand your chakras, open up your chakras, align your chakras, you got to connect to your Ori, you got to connect to your inner divine self. All of that, once you are divine, opened up, balanced and aligned, your crown, your Ori, your crown chakra is open. Spirit is coming to communicate. When your crown is open and aligned, when you are aligned and that crown is open, you are ready to receive. How can you be ready to receive when everything else is blocked? 
So the reason this is closed, the reason your crown is closed is because there's a blockage. The reason you can't be open to receive is because there's a blockage. So check in with that solar plexus, check in with that sacral, check in with that root, check in with that heart, that love center, that communication center, that community center. That's the heart where we hold community, where we hold sacred space for ourselves and others. Check in with that throat, that communication. Check in with that divine intuition, that knowing, that pineal gland. Check in. Once all of that is together, open to receive communication. Okay? Do you have videos to help you connect with your spirit guides and ancestors? I do have quite a vid uh, quite a few videos on ancestors um, and, all, and all that stuff. Okay, I do uh, just type the Queen Poe Ancestors in uh, the search bar and it shall come up. Oh, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all always. I'm going to see if I uh, if there are any other clarifying questions. Y'all, here go Diddy. Diddy, I'm, I'm still on the live with the people. Okay, I'm, I'm still on the live with the people. I'm almost done. I'm, I'm almost done. I know it's been an hour. Y'all, he done been outside. Okay, he done been outside. He don't need nothing. Huh? He don't need nothing. He just wants some attention. Okay, let me make sure. Let me answer some questions. Yeah, Diddy, they shouting you out. They shouting you out. Okay, yes, you said, how you gonna win when you ain't right within? Come on now. How you gonna win when you ain't right within? Uh-uh, come again. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Come on. Diddy, that is not a sign that we ready to party. Okay, I feel like I answered most of the questions. Um, this is all fixable. I say, I say it is all fixable. Okay, so when you get multiple signs, sensing, hearing, seeing, and smelling, does that mean I've been ignoring them when I thought I was tuned in and they are trying to get my attention? Yes, if you already getting signs and you, and that's another thing. Okay, so let me just go ahead and address that. Hmm? When you are getting signs, when you are getting signs and you start ignoring them, what happens is spirit is going to try a multitude of ways to continue. They're going to try a multitude of ways to continue to communicate. But when you keep ignoring, they're going to move on. Okay? They're going to move on. And not move on in the sense of they don't mess with you no more, but move on in the sense that they realize that you aren't ready for communication. And they'll be patient and wait until you get ready. But life is just going to happen. Things is just going to happen. Okay? And you didn't have to have certain things happen because you could have had the foresight and chose differently. Okay? Um, Mickey said, can you talk about the difference between psychic and a medium? Mediums are uh, people who communicate with spirit and ancestors, people who have transitioned. That's a medium. You are a medium between the spirit realm. That's literally what it is. You're a medium between the spirit realm and the physical realm. That's a medium. Okay. Psychic, it, it does, it's not necessarily about spirit ancestors. It's not necessarily about ancestors and people who have transitioned. People can be psychic and have the knowing of the physical realm. OK, so have the ability to uh, understand what's happening and what's occurring in the physical realm. OK, so they usually that's why psychic is usually associated with like clairvoyance or clairaudience. It's about receiving messages about what's happening in this physical realm. So mediums can usually, uh, you know, again, mediums are all about ancestors and communicating with spirits, ancestors who have transitioned. Psychics is about knowing this present physical realm. Um, and that's why some people will say I'm a psychic medium. You know, when you hear that, they're not saying like it's one. They're literally saying I do both. I'm a psychic medium. And they'll say that. OK, so that's why some people identify that way as psychic mediums. That was a good question. Um, let's see. I'm trying to make sure when I wake up at 3 a.m. with my ears ringing, what do you say? Uh, what what you suggest I do to tap in? So spirit hours, 
when you wake up at spirit hours, right, and you you hear your ears ringing, of course, ears ringing, we know that's a sign that spirit is present. The thing about spirit hours, uh, the hours of 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. usually, anytime, you know, some people fear those hours because they feel like, you know, that's when dark energies roam. Y'all, I'm not even going to go into the whole speech, but I told y'all we don't entertain nothing that's not for our wellness, okay? So the first thing you should do is get you a, something smudging, something smudging, get you a smoke bowl going. I don't care if you got you just like a sage incense or a rosemary Apollo incense, whatever, but get you something smudging to clear the energy. Okay, you know, Sharice, I ain't gonna go into my whole spiel, huh? Yes, the veil is thin. So during spirit hours, the veil is thin between the spiritual realm and the physical realm. So you get something smudged, you get some smoke going and you do that, all right? To clear, to clear the energy around you so you could communicate with wellness, okay? That's the first thing you do. And then you do whatever your spirit leads you to do next. So sometimes you may just need to lay there where you are and be open to communication. Sometimes you may need to get up and start writing. You may need to start journaling and spirit is going to communicate with you as that hand is moving and you're releasing. Okay, because sometimes in your sleep, the reason you got woken up or awakened is that in your sleep, spirit drops something on you and you need to get it out. So writing helps yes that is also my most productive time too that's my most productive time as well is, is spirit hours i'm up usually doing something okay and then i you know i, I have a 4 a.m prayer time anyway okay so you you start praying that's another thing sometimes you may go to your altar sometimes again you may just lay right there and just pray and pray and pray and pray you know but try to try to be intentional about getting something going how can i control my empath emotions separating what's yours and what's other people's that's the key to being an empath you have to be able to separate what's yours and what's other people's um i put up the spiritual cleanse video for yesterday 1101 i put up the spiritual cleanse video um use some of those spiritual cleanses so you could tap in to your own self your own emotions and learn how to cleanse away other people's energy cleanse away other people's emotions okay so you're not walking around carrying everything you've picked up as an empath. The key to being an empath, you know, um, I already have a previous video about being an empath and the empath check. But the key to being an empath is you have to know you feel, okay, differentiate between feeling the emotions of others, understanding the emotions of others, and carrying the emotions of others. Empaths have to stop carrying that's what weighs you down. That's what makes you feel overwhelmed. When you carry the emotions of others, stop it. We're not carrying anybody's emotions. You feel them, you understand them, and you leave them where they are. But in order to know how to do that, you have to know yourself. You have to know what's yours. As you enhance your empath gift, you have to enhance your knowing of who you are, knowledge of self, okay? Knowledge of self is key. When you know who you are, you can be an empath. You know that those feelings are not yours. That energy is not yours. Therefore, you release it. And to release it, sometimes you have to just literally breathe it out. You have to breathe it out and release it. One of my favorite films or an aspect of this film, I should say, um, is The Green Mile. And you know, you know, in the green mile, he used to pick up the sicknesses of others. He would literally absorb the sicknesses of others and then he would breathe it out to release it from his own body. You know, literally, that's what you have to do sometimes. You have to just breathe out that energy. That energy is not yours. That energy does not belong to you. Okay? That energy does not belong to you. So just kind of release that. Okay? And that's, that's, that's one way. That's one way. Yes, we so as an empath, you feel the emotions, you understand the emotions, but you don't have to carry it. You don't have to carry it. Okay, y'all, I'm about to head out. Thank you, Universal Lighthouse, for recommending the good herb spot. You know, the thing about mountain herbs is mountain herbs ain't black owned. They're not black owned, but you know, I'm fair. I'm fair. And I said this in the chat earlier in the wellness community group chat. I said, you know, with mountain herbs, they're not black owned, but I have to be fair and say they got good stuff. They got good stuff. They really do. 
Okay, they surely do. Okay, they got good stuff, but they not, they not, but they, they got good stuff. I got to be fair. And that's the thing, you know, uh, to my black folks out there, you know, and I'm, I, I understand because I was, if y'all know, you watch my early YouTube videos, I was going to do an online store. And when you realize the amount of work that's in the online store versus the amount of work uh, that's in the storefront, you'll, you'll much rather go to with the storefront route because packing and shipping and all of that is a lot of energy and you ain't making that much return. So I understand why we don't have as many black owned online herb shops. You know, I understand. But I wish we had more. In the meantime, Mountain Herbs got some good stuff. They got some good stuff. Okay. I wish I had an online black herb shop to recommend. But, you know, they got they got some good stuff. Uh, okay. You said you're going to reach out to me in the wellness community group chat. I respond to the wellness community group chat much faster. Emails, DMs may take a while. Y'all, Instagram, I got this new update where when somebody mentions you. Before, if somebody mentioned you, it'll usually come through the DM. Now they have it where mentions you means at you. Okay, like they at you. That's what, That would be considered a mention. Yeah, now a mention is anytime somebody reposts your video, even in their story, it comes through as a mention, which then comes through as a DM. Okay, so now I woke up this morning to an abundance more of DMs than I normally wake up. I'm talking about over 2,000 something DMs. Okay, I usually wake up to around three, 400. This morning, I woke up to two over 2,000 DMs because now they done got this new feature that every time somebody, you know, shares your story and posts it. And I'm very grateful to be shared. I'm very grateful. So this is not a complaint, but I'm just explaining why, you know, the DMs be overwhelmed. So when you don't try to DM me because now I got to filter through like, oh, this is just a mention. This is just a mention. This is just a mention. This is a message. This is just a mention. Just a mention. This is a message. So, you know, I don't know what made them put that update. I mean, I guess it's good because now, you know, every time somebody shares your story, you can now respond, respond and thank them. So that's a good thing because before somebody would repost my story and I would never know, like we would never get any type of notification, not my story, but repost like a post. We would never get any type of notification. Now it comes through as a DM. So y'all DMs responses is definitely about to be on back order. I'm about to do you like Crate and Barrel with a sofa. You know, Crate and Barrel with a sofa had you waiting six months to a year. Don't be mad at me, huh? You said Yayo Botanica is black owned. Okay, Yayo Botanica is black owned and she's online at Herb Shop. Black owned herb shops online with good herbs. Okay, so they shouting out something in the chat. Come on now. But yes, if you're trying to reach out to me, wellness community group chat, I am in there. Okay, I just responded to uh, some questions and stuff this morning. So that's the best way. Okay, thank you for shouting out the Black-owned online herb shops. Okay, I'm speaking of, okay, I'm about to wrap up, but I'm about to tell y'all. Um, I'm doing a, uh, Yale Botanica has a YouTube page. Okay, I'm doing um, a live with inner crystallization soon. Inner crystallization, you know, Black-owned crystal um crystal shop so uh, online and ship so i'm doing a live with him soon so he can talk about healing and the spiritual journey from the black male perspective um and talk about crystals and how crystals are used and what crystals are best so in the group chat i'll let y'all know where that live is going to be and when we're going to do that so y'all can tap into that and be able to ask him all the crystal questions and stuff y'all wants to ask him huh i'm gonna ask and then i have another one uh you said, thank you, Ifa K Slaves. That's somebody's name. But that you saying Ifa reminded me that I have another one coming up soon with the Ia Nifa, who's been in tradition in Ifa Isheshe tradition for over 20 years. Um, and she does groups to Nigeria um, for to learn about Ifa and to for, to get initiated for initiation. Okay, so she's an Ia Nifa for over 20 years. She mentors and all of that stuff. So I'll introduce her to the community. And, you know, for anyone who's interested in E5 initiation, me and her will be talking about that. And that will be coming up very, very soon. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be back live, too, and back working, huh? 
it's a beautiful thing, y'all. I told you, you know, and you know, we I don't I talked about before the grief process. I probably will do a separate video on this, but you know, in the grief process, I told y'all before, you have to learn yourself again. You have to learn yourself again when you lose, you know, people, especially elders, especially like, you know, people who were very close to you. You have to learn a new version of life. You learn a new version of life and you learn a new version of awareness of who you are and how you show up without having these elders present. So the grief process took me a while and it took me a while to to fully understand who I am and what's happening and to find new elders that I felt comfortable going to, you know, because I'm an elder to some people, but I also need my elders too. You know, so finding new elders and connecting with new elders um, that I could feel comfortable talking to and going to and being advised by and all of that. So yes, that 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 grief is that grief is no game. And it took about a year and a half. Thank you, if I case slays. I appreciate you. Thank you. But that that grief took about a year and a half for me to really push through. You know, for me to really push through because the whole family dynamic changes, you know, everything just changes and shifts, you know. Now, things that people used to call my aunt for, they call me for, you know, like I'm the, I'm the, I'm the elder, you know, an elder now, you know. Uh, shout out to my big, I have a big sister. I'm able to lean on my big sister. You know, we have grown, we were always close. We have grown even more close. You know, th th these are all changes of life that grief brings. Grief literally changes your life, huh? It changes your life. You say you just lost someone, uh, you said you lost her on, oh, I shaved very early, very early. So you said uh, September 12th. The thing about it is you said, oh, all my elders die on the 12th. You know, the thing, the thing about it is, hey, Sasha, I see you. Um, you know, I feel like we don't talk about that enough. People talk about grieving. And that's why if, if you look at the video where I talked about uh, spiritual struggles and I didn't want to hurt the sister's feelings, but the sister said that her son you know, was, was murdered. And she said, uh, she's grieving, but should she start the spiritual journey? And I said, you need to let grief. Okay. I got, I, I'm, I'm about to have my phone is on 10%. I'm wrapping up, but I said, you know, you need to let grief take its course. You need to allow grief to have its process because grief is going to have its process. And it looks different for everyone. But what I find that the process includes for everybody is having to find a new normal. When you lose someone close to you, you have to find a new normal. That means that you have to recognize what that person meant to you. You have to acknowledge and recognize how you value them and how they showed up in your life. You know, you have to recognize that that is missing. So when people talk about, I have a void, I have a void. That's the void, you know, because that is now missing. You know, and then you kind of have those concerns. Like I said, this is a whole separate video because then you have those concerns about, you know, people who come around you with the intention of fulfilling that void. But then what do they want in return? So you don't know who to really trust to come into your circle again. You know, all of this is a part of the grief process, you guys. And, you know, especially when you are in my position, I, I had to be careful. Because, you know, I don't have, y'all know, I don't have a relationship with my biological mother. My aunt was a mother figure for me. Um, and when my aunt passed, there were a lot of olders who tried to come in and play elder as though they were a mother figure, but they really wanted something in return. You know, I had an older person come in and try to play like, oh, you know, I, I, I'm a mother figure, like try to play that role. And then a couple months later, ask me, you know, for help with, for money. And was a constant thing of asking for money. So you got to start being careful of who's new trying to come into your life and build relationships with the wrong intentions. All of y'all, like I said, it's a whole separate video. But yeah, y'all, that grieving process is real. And you have to be very careful, you know, and, and you know, other people are in the family are grieving. You know, there, there's a lot of things. But yes, you know, I'm able to, I'm just now, a year and a half later, feeling like my full self again. You know, feeling like my full self again, feeling like uh, I, I am well, you know, fully. I always felt well, but feeling like my full self, feeling like my motivated self, um, you know, feel I, I, it's like waking up feeling 
I'm a morning person. So waking up feeling like, oh, let's do something. Let's go. Let's get going. I just within this past like month and a half, two months, started feeling that again, started feeling the get up and go, you know, so I was well, but I was just moving through life over this year and a half, you know, moving through life. Uh, but the joy is back. The genuine from the start of the day, motivation and joy has now returned. Ashe, Ashe, we give thanks for that. You know, I give thanks for that. So y'all are, y'all are reaping the benefits of the joy because I wake up motivated to teach and I wake up motivated to learn and I wake up motivated to study and to share, you know, and to answer questions and to do videos. Like that's a part of my passion and the joy for my passion has now returned. So Y'all are seeing more of me. And we have a wellness community Zoom on Saturday. Y'all get your get your get your, your drinks and your herbal ligations, whatever you enjoy. Okay. And be ready and prepared for the Zoom on Saturday. My intention is to have the video with the Ianifa um come out before then. So if y'all have any questions about Efa, we can talk about that during a Zoom. I want to talk about the full moon in Taurus that's gonna happen on the 8th. We'll talk about that during the Zoom. So the Zoom, we, you know, we got a few things on a list, okay? It's gonna be a good time, all right? But y'all will probably see me here before Saturday. All right. Love y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed this video and I'll see y'all soon. Pete Diddy, you wanna come say bye? Come on and say bye to the people. Now Diddy don't want to be in the video. He's so fake. He is so fake. Oh, he coming. He coming. Come on, Diddy. Say bye to the people. Okay. Say bye to, bye to the people. Bye. All right, y'all. Peace.